unexplained lights in the skies, haunting screams in abandoned asylums, people disappearing into thin air, whispers of encounters that chill you to the bone. Are they just myths, or is there something more? I'm Austin, and these are the Spook Files. Today, we will be talking about the Zanesville Animal Massacre and the conspiracy theory that surrounds it. But, before we talk about the conspiracy, it is important that you understand the publicly accepted story around the events first. On October 18, 2011, an event would happen that would change Ohio and its laws forever. Some people call this the Zanesville Zoo Escape, the Zanesville Animal Escape, or even the Zanesville Massacre, an event that resulted in 51 deaths. Terry Thompson, a Vietnam War vet, was a well-known handler of exotic animals living in Zanesville, Ohio. He even did a photo shoot with one of his lion cubs in Heidi Klum and was featured as a handler on the TV show Wild Kingdom. Now Terry lived in a rural area of Zanesville and on his property he kept over 50 different exotic animals. Terry had unfortunately been in a bit of a downward spiral the last few years, going to prison on gun charges, his wife leaving him, and going into a large amount of debt. On this otherwise calm October day in 2011, Terry would reportedly make choices that would change Ohio forever. It is reported that Terry unlocked all of the animal cages and even used bolt cutters on the cages to ensure they couldn't be fully closed again. It is then said that he took his own life with a gunshot to the head. Sam Kochak, one of Terry's neighbors, would be the first to notice the escaped animals as he checked on his horse who was acting strangely. Sam said he saw a male African lion watching him. So he took his horse and hid in his barn. From the barn he phoned his mother who was in the nearby house to alert her about the wild animals. And in turn she alerted the police. Now this wasn't the first time an animal had escaped from Terry's land so the police were well aware of him and somewhat prepared for a call of this nature. What they couldn't be prepared for, though, is what happened next. More and more calls began to flood into the 911 call center. People all around the area were seeing exotic animals. The police panicked, unable to get a hold of Terry, and contacted the Wilds, who were also aware of Terry, and asked them for their help. Unfortunately, as the animals began to move into less rural areas, near highways, and even near schools, it was determined that there would not be ample time to tranquilize them and wait for the tranquilizer to set in. The very hard decision was made that the animals would need to be put down. Over the next day, 49 animals of the total 56 animals on Terry's farm would be put down, with one monkey still missing to this day, although it is presumed that it was eaten by another animal. The death of these animals certainly saved some human lives. However, it was not popular in the community, and the police received several calls of people calling them monsters for what they were doing. It did not help that the story had gained international popularity and the world's eyes were on Ohio as they watched the events unfold. Terry's death was quickly ruled as a suicide with his downward spiral 
as the accepted reasoning behind his actions. The event also led to the governor at the time banning exotic animal sales in Ohio for some time, and eventually led to Ohio adopting new exotic animal laws, making Ohio go from a state with some of the most lax exotic animal laws to one of the strictest exotic animal laws in the nation. And that is the unfortunate story of the Zanesville Animal Massacre, which led to the death of Terry Thompson, 18 Bengal tigers, 6 black bears, 2 grizzly bears, 2 wolves, 1 maquis monkey, 1 baboon, 3 mountain lions, and 17 African lions. While that is the public story, it is not accepted by everyone, including Joe Exotic, the Tiger King himself. Despite living close to Zanesville, I had not heard of this conspiracy until I was in college and attending a wildlife club meeting. Now, before I dive in, I want to make it clear. This is all alleged. It is hearsay. It is a fun little theory with no legal standing and should not be taken as factual information. Now, with that bit out of the way, let's get into the theory. Now, the actual conspiracy theory itself is pretty straightforward. Terry Thompson did not kill himself, and instead was murdered, used as a fall guy to pass new exotic animal laws to take away options from private owners. And if this was the case, it was successful. Now, you may be asking yourself, why Terry Thompson? And really, no matter what side of the conspiracy spectrum you may fall on, you do have to admit that Terry would be the perfect fall guy. He was a Vietnam vet who had killed people in the war and had assaulted someone once back stateside. He was in the process of a separation, had just spent time in jail, and was massively in debt. Terry also had a history of some of his animals escaping, and in the past, the Columbus Zoo had unsuccessfully tried to take his animals away. Then, of course, there are the alleged details of the case that do not match up. Again, I want to state these are allegations Hearsay, rumors with no concrete proof, things that only happened in Minecraft, and other legal jargon. They should not be used to go after any people or entities who may or may not be involved in this case. Now, one of the biggest issues in the case, in my personal opinion, is the lack of reason for Terry to release his animals. Any experienced animal handler, such as Terry, would know that his animals would meet a horrible, terrible end if they got out into the public, which is unfortunately exactly what happened to them. And everyone who knew Terry said he loved his animals, and to state that he would want harm to come to them is unthinkable to most. Now, some have tried to say that he released them in order to at least give them a chance at surviving instead of surviving to death in the cages. Now, while in a way this is kind of a bittersweet idea that he wanted his animals to have a chance no matter how small, even after he was gone, it's actually very easy to disprove this. Because Terry was not the only one caring for the animals. Not only was his wife caring for the animals the whole time he was in prison and considered the animals her babies, but they also had a hired caretaker named John Moore who regularly fed the animals and checked up on them. There would be no rational reasoning 
for him to release the animals. Not to mention, simply opening up the cages would have been enough to release the animals, but some cages were both unlocked and cut by bolt cutters. Furthermore, another issue that is pointed out is that not all animals were released, and among those that weren't released included three leopards. Now, while I may not think he is exactly the best source or best person, I will admit that Joe Exotic, the Tiger King himself, knows more about big cats than I ever will. He also personally knew Terry Thompson and his wife. Joe points out in his own video about the tragedy that the three leopards that weren't released were extremely valuable animals. And of course, for some time, those animals did end up in the possession of the Columbus Zoo after the events. Now, the next part of the theory is moving into what I am going to call super hearsay theory. Um, pretty much nothing in this little blip has any backing behind it that I can prove, whereas other ones have some grain of truth. I cannot prove any of this. So as I'm going to say, super hearsay only happened in Minecraft. Don't go after any of these people because we cannot prove anything. Now, according to these rumors, the gun that Terry supposedly shot himself was originally owned by a Zanesville sheriff deputy. Now, apparently, this deputy did in fact claim that he originally owned the gun, but sold the gun to Terry. As Terry was known to be an avid gun lover, this in itself would not be too strange. It is also reported, though, that Terry was found 17 feet away from the gun that he had used to kill himself, his body surrounded by raw meat. Now, while it is true that gunshot residue was found on Terry's hand, it was reportedly found on his non-dominant hand. Now, police do say that the reason that the gun was so far from the body was that Terry was dragged by one of the animals. And while this could make sense, I would like to circle back to the raw meat near Terry's body. Tom Stahl, who was CEO of the Columbus Zoo at the time, confirmed that there was raw chicken near Terry's body and theorized he wanted his animals to eat him. Now, let's just all pause and take a moment to think about this. Terry shot himself in the head according to the public story. The gun Terry shot himself with was found 17 feet away from him because he was dragged by the animals. But the raw chicken was found next to his body as well. Did the animals also drag the raw chicken 17 feet without eating it? That seems highly unlikely to me, and I would also like to point out, and this is not hearsay, this is actual factual things, that in October of 2023, Tom Stahl and other Columbus Zoo executives were indicted on felony charges. Tom himself was charged with 36 felony charges. So, he is not exactly the type of person I would trust at this point. Now, finally, moving back into the more normal parts of the conspiracy, the timeline of events is called into question. See, Terry was still alive around 3 p.m. on the day of his death, and the first sighting of his animals began a little after 5 p.m. on that day meaning that within around two hours, Terry Thompson supposedly released the majority of his 56 animals scattered across 73 acres, both opening the locks and cutting up some of the cages. 
He then spread raw meat around his body and shot himself in the head with his non-dominant hand. Now, according to those who have attempted the scenario, running through it, running through times, based on the distance of the cages, how long it would take to open up the cages, to cut up the cages, all of that, none of them have been able to do it in the time frame that Terry would have had to do it. Now, if this was the conspiracy, if Terry Thompson was a fall guy meant to help bring about stricter exotic animal laws in Ohio, well, it worked. In 2014, three years after the event of that October day, Ohio passed strict exotic animal laws. And from 2014 to 2021, the number of exotic animals in Ohio fell from over 900 to less than 150. Now, while I am not personally against any laws that would keep exotic animals out of the hands of unexperienced people, it does seem like Terry Thompson was experienced. When I first heard this story at a wildlife club meeting in college, I will admit, I thought it was a bit crazy, like I do most conspiracy theories, if I'm being honest. But the more I have looked into it, the more research I have done, the more I feel the conspiracy theory makes more sense than the public story. Sadly, we may never know the truth of the events of that day that led to the death of Terry Thompson and 50 exotic animals. And for that reason, this case will remain a part of the Spook Files. The world is a strange and mysterious place. What we encounter tonight serves as a reminder. There's more to this reality than we understand. Keep your eyes open, question the shadows, and remember, the truth may be closer than you think. Until next time, stay curious, stay spooky, and good night.